So ram pumps are fascinating things, mostly because they don't use any external power. What they use is the flow of the water to take water from a low head with a large flow to a high head with a low flow, and they do that with a minimum of mechanical parts. Now, like everything, it's got a history, and the first idea of doing this was in the Alhambra in 1298, would you believe it? But it wasn't until 1772 that Joshua Whitehurst invented a manually controlled ram pump, as we sort of know today. He installed one in Cheshire, another in Ireland, but he never patented it, so it's a bit vague, but it did talk about an air chamber. One that we would recognise as a ram pump was 1796 by Montgolfier of the balloon flame uh, fame. And he improved that in 1816 and the patent was bought in 1820 by Joshua Easton who set up Easton Pumps and that company ran until 1909, was taken over by his son and reopened in 1926 just providing pumps, and you can still see their pumps, they're still around. I think they finished around about 2004 is when the company actually closed, but the pumps are still there. Now, interest in ram pumps waned in the late 1800s because of the advent of electricity. Electrical pumps were just so much easier to use, and that killed off the ram pump. Until recently, when there's been a resurgence in interest because of the energy crisis. You know those heady days when we could burn everything and not worry about the impact, and now we worry about it. But it was in 1931 when Hans Gunther actually suggested ram pumps as the use in wave power. So even then it was going back quite a way for the multiple uses of ram pumps. Uh, they still developed. It was in 1996 uh, when Selwyn, uh, Fred Selwyn, invented a ram pump that uses the Venturi effect and that's for sale now, it's called the Papa Ram Pump. So there's been a huge resurgence in interest and it's obvious why that interest has been uh, rekindled because the ram pump is a an astonishingly simple design using no external source of power. Have a look at that, you'll see that there's the two check valves and there's an air pressure at port 6. That's the key invention because this works in water hammer. So this is a slightly different design, but the water is delivered through a slanting pipe and the water is driven into the pump using simple gravity and closes the waste valve and that creates high pressure. The water then travels vertically through the pump body, opens the delivery valve and enters the pressure chamber. This compresses the air in the column. The compressed air then forces the water back, closing the delivery valve, and then water flows up through the delivery pipe. Then the pressure falls in the lower part of the pump and the waste valve opens, allowing the water again to fall, fall through the drive pipe. The waste valve closes once more, delivery valve opens, and the cycle repeats. In practice, a ramp pump actually isn't much more than a little bit of piping and a couple of valves. I've loosely fitted this together so you can see how it runs. Here's the inlet, which corresponds to number three. Water comes in here, it'll go there, that's the check valve, and this is my exit valve here. So the water flows out here until it raises that valve, slams it shut, the water hammer travels here, up through that valve, and onto the top here where there's the accumulator. When that water hammer effect reduces and the pressure gets too much, it closes that valve, and then it recycles, because this valve will have dropped open. Now, it's really simple. I've used chose two flap valves as they're my valves, but it's more common to have a spring valve here. If you have a spring valve here, you can alter its operation or tune its operation by changing the spring tension. I'm going to have to put little weights onto the flap if I need to, to actually make sure that flap operates. But that's all there is to it. Now, I've also added an exit, which is right right here and a pressure gauge so i can have a look and see what the pressure is but they're, they're unnecessary we just exit through here and that's going to be your delivery pipe right there now i've only loosely fastened these together just so you get the idea of them and obviously they come apart and they're just one inch screw thread pipes that i picked up from the local plumbing store so that's the other thing about ram pumps they're incredibly easy to pick up the bits that you need from them. The only thing to remember is get the valves in the right direction. And that's easy enough because there's an arrow telling you. And there's my little flat valve. Now on the top of there, we needed the accumulator. And I've seen these accumulators made from all kinds of things. Um, fire extinguishers, propane tanks, glued together bits of pipe, all that sort of stuff. I'm quite lucky in that I happen to have a real life accumulator. 
So this is an accumulator taken from a central heating system, but again, you don't need that. You, any vessel that's going to take that pressure and can be connected to that pipe is just fine. And mine comes with a pipe connection flange at three quarters of an inch, so dead easy for me to connect that together. Now all I have to do is screw all those bits together in the arrangement that you saw that matches that diagram that we just looked at. And to do that, I've got myself some plumber's tape. All those joints are threaded joints, so... I have to go all of, over, over all of them with some plumber's tape and then screw them together. But that's the only job I need to do. And there is my ramp pump all together and it follows the diagram exactly. And they're all like this, just use different things to make them. Like I say, I was lucky to have this accumulator. But you can glue one up from some pipe if you want anywhere. The only thing really to do with this is um, give it a run and see if it works. <laughs> Okay, that was awesome, actually. Now, to get it to work, because I'm using flat valves, and incidentally, I'm using flat valves because that's what I've got, I put this weight on it, and the weight acts in the same way as a spring, and we get the oscillation, so it worked. However, I'm not really interested in using this to pump water per se, because I don't live on a farm, and I don't have a need to irrigate some field uh, 10 metres above my head. But what I am interested in is this bit here. Because this bit here, remember, is the bit that takes out the knock from the uh, water hammer effect, but it does a whole lot of other things as well. It builds up pressure in this section here. Now, Mr. Tesalonian combined this with the trough to make a high pressure vessel, and that's what I'm really interested in. So before I do that, I'm gonna replace these uh, flat valves with spring valves, and then we're gonna see what kind of pressure we can get in there so that we can use the pressure in here. It's either the pressure of the water or the pressure of the air, because this thing comes a little air valve at the top. So I might try running a, an airbrush from it, um, but certainly I'm looking at it as an energy store as opposed to a method of pumping water. First thing says so, I need to replace those valves I think with spring valves because that weight balancing worked really quite well, but I don't think it's going to be robust enough for what I actually want. Anyway, I thought I'd go through the ramp pump and how to make one and what I plan to do with it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please remember to like and subscribe.